This video is brought to you by us, Snipebee. We help companies pitch investors by helping them prepare a pitch deck, calculate how much they need to raise, and identify investors in their space. You can sign up for free at slidebeecom slash YouTube. When you talk about stories in social media, it usually means posts that can be a video, an image, or text that'll just vanish, usually after 24 hours. Before Snapchat introduced this idea of disappearing messages and content back in 2013, every post on social media remained in the archives of the internet forever. Now fast forward to 2021, and all the leading social media platforms have their own stories feature. The ones we all know, Instagram, Facebook, and even LinkedIn. And then there are other platforms like Pinterest and Spotify. They're experimenting on implementing a story feature. And then of course, Twitter. But some of them may have been a little too early to the party. Twitter only came up with this version of stories in late 2020 when they introduced fleets. Like fleeting tweets, get it? In the first days, the feature reportedly experienced issues with a load of users and was pretty sluggish. Being the solid platform they are, Twitter fixed the technical issues, but Fleets had a bigger problem. People wouldn't use it. It was pretty much the same stories feature people had been using for years. A roll of posts on top of your regular feed, just like your Instagram stories. The content you see there from the accounts you follow disappears after 24 hours. But fast forward to today, only eight months later, Twitter is calling it a day and shutting down Fleets. Why? Well, they have admitted that the feature didn't pick up steam as they hoped and they're going back to the drawing board. So let's talk about Twitter today and how they failed to adopt one of the most trending forms of social media for younger generations. This is Company Forensics. A brief history of stories. The first one to come up with this feature was Snapchat back in 2013 when it introduced the interactions between users in the form of disappearing messages and posts. Snapchat wanted to be a more ephemeral and informal channel to interact with other people. It became one of the fastest growing social media apps ever. Already in 2014, Snapchat had more than 30 million users and continued to grow to more than 80 million in the following years. And a lot of that success probably had to do with Snapchat's fresh take on social media. That simple idea of disappearing posts became a blueprint for the industry. It resonated with the younger audience right away, but also proved to be quite valuable for different purposes. All this matters because stories took over popular social media platforms almost 10 years ago. Twitter joining the party so late might be bad in the long term. Since the beginning of stories, its functionality has evolved in many ways. It has constantly added new engagement features like AR filters, good old stickers and GIFs, but a set of new e-commerce solutions makes stories appealing for advertisers and different kinds of businesses too. In 2016, Instagram pretty much carbon copied the feature and became a massive success, counting more than 500 million daily users now. They were so popular that Facebook decided to implement them on its platform and on WhatsApp. And even other platforms like Spotify, which is not inherently a social media platform, LinkedIn and Pinterest have been experimenting with stories. And then came, of course, TikTok in 2017, making waves on the social media waters, sharing many of Snapchat's styles of doing things with short videos in full screen vertical format. However, TikTok has no stories or vanishing posts for that matter. But other companies have evolved their version of stories. For example, YouTube is now calling it shorts and experiments to make the platform more accessible for people to record and upload 60 second videos from their phones. One we are trying ourselves, by the way. It just got out of beta and it remains to be seen if YouTube will end up looking more like TikTok after all. Can you imagine me dancing to BTS? And it has also become the place for experimentation on live streaming or live audio chats. Twitter has noticed other social media fads too, like the fading success of Clubhouse, go watch a video about it. And anyway, they introduced Spaces, which is a place for live audio chat groups. And apparently Spaces will continue to live and take Fleet's space on that upper page. So stories are part of the new norm, a more casual, less permanent way for people to share experiences and thoughts on the fly. It sounds like something that would have fit into Twitter's nature. Isn't Twitter supposed to be all about fleeting thoughts and casual conversation, at least? It was before it mutated into this powerful social and even political tool, but that's probably a whole nother story. So what went wrong with fleets? Ultimately, people weren't using it, or at least not the people they intended to use it. We're sorry or you're welcome. Whatever that's supposed to mean, but those were the final words in the official tweet announcing the end of fleets. In a blog post, they stated how the feature didn't really meet their expectations of encouraging more people to tweet. They hoped that it would be a lower pressure, ephemeral way for new people to share their fleeting thoughts, but it wasn't. 
Apparently, those who used it the most were already active and seasoned tweeters, but the goal of Fleets was to attract and engage new tweeters. One of Twitter's heads of product acknowledged that there are still many Twitter users who don't really tweet or participate in the conversation, so they're still figuring out that, how to entice these users to be more active on the platform. And they couldn't make it this time, and of course, they hope to have learned some lessons to apply to future developments. Like, they have suggested it's probably not the end for full screen vertical posts on Twitter. And they have said this, soon we'll test updates to the Tweet Composer and the camera to incorporate features from fleets, like the full screen camera, text formatting options, and GIF stamps. But after failing this shot on stories, how else will they introduce that kind of content? Will they just try again? Or will they reinvent the feature and bring up something new? I guess we'll have to wait and see. What we can see are different behaviors on social media from different age groups and generations. That means that the Gen Zs, Millennials, and older generations have different perceptions and attitudes towards social media, which ultimately shapes how it changes over time. So marketing agencies think millennials still use social media to keep up with their business contacts, friends, family, and personal interests. On the other hand, Gen Zs look more for a source of mass entertainment content. What do you think? Is Twitter more suited for millennials and these older generations? I guess us. While Gen Zs are taking over these newer outlets? Or was it just bad timing from Twitter to jump onto the stories wagon? We really would love to hear your thoughts because I have no idea what ended up killing fleets. Do let us know in the comments. And in case you're building a business and you don't want to fail like Twitter's fleets, you might want to check Slidebeam. We have a specialized hub for founders and startup teams looking to develop a pitch deck to run their financials and to find investors for their company. You get the resources to learn how to do it yourselves as you can be advised by our team via our expert network. Our experts can get involved and help prepare your business to entice investors the right way. So you want to go to slidebeam.com slash YouTube, link in the description to learn more. Speaking of influencers, we're releasing one of my favorite videos this week where we had a special fellow influencer guest on our channel. So please hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for that. It'll come up in a couple of days. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next week.